Hi, in this tutorial I'll be going into some of the things that I've managed to work out with the DS10 drum voices which have let me go a bit beyond the standard sort of sounds that are offered in the, uh, the demo tracks and in the um, presets and to get more towards sounds like this. this Let's have a look at some of those drums that I was um, that were playing just then. Those obviously those patterns are all just using the same basic drum voices. But they've been pitched at different pitches to get some of the effects. For instance, the snare voice here is pitched down low as well as at a more medium pitch. Let's look at that snare voice. Now what you'll see here is that I've got some tone added from the triangle and I've got a bit of uh, white noise there, but the most important thing that's going on here, yeah, we've got the little bit of extra attack, a um, little bit of extra gain given by the EG modulating the VCA. But what we'll see when we get to the effects is that I'm using a short delay and quite a large feedback to get the metallic tones on the snare. So let's turn that off and you'll see what I mean. So now that's just, you can hear the triangle in there and you can hear the noise in there. So a little bit of drive, which obviously, you know, fattens things up a bit. And absolutely nothing going on with the filter and almost nothing going on with the pitch envelope. So most of what makes this sound interesting is the air that gets put in from the effects. Now, if you're wondering how you come about sounds like that, the most important thing is that this takes some kind of trial and error. What I've found is a good technique is to turn up the feedback a long way and then you can adjust the delay time for a coarse, coarse adjustment. So you can hear that the delay line is resonating quite strongly with the actual drum voice. The other thing that you can do is use the fact that although the delay for the drum voice is a mono delay, it's still got the left-right ratio control, which means that you can actually get two, to two separate delay taps by moving away from the center here. And once you move away from the center, you, hear that you get a whole range of different timbres depending on how you adjust this control. Now remember that whenever the control's on this side, that means that this delay is the one that you set there. The right hand delay tap is that one there. And this left hand delay tap is made shorter. If you go back the other way, then there's no advantage in doing it one way or the other for the drum voices because they're just mixed down to mono. But what it means is that you can choose different amounts of dissonance depending on the ratio of the delays here. So, let's see how that sounds when we put it back into the original pattern. It's not bad. For the hi-hat, you 
here that we've got the same kind of effect going on. We've got a metallic sort of hi-hat sound. Again, you can see that we've got a very simple patch. We've just basically got white noise. White noise, no distortion, you know, no drive, no filtering, no nothing, just an envelope applied to it. No, nothing in happening in the patch. So it's all, all of the metallic timbre is being added using the delay line. 